Okay, um, at this time, I'd like to t get a motion to return to a public session. Can I get a motion? I have Mark Freiberg, I have Ingrid, all in favor? Okay, we are now in public session. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Uh, I think we're uh, just, I think we're set for the pledge. Yes, okay. Okay, Julie, do you have to stand, I think, right? <laughs> yes. All right. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Did, you, did everybody see the um, Good Morning America, the uh, person that didn't was weren't wasn't wearing pants he had his suit <laughs> yeah. yes I, no so i wanted to make sure everybody had their pants on we <laughs> very very proud of this group for being prepared and yes. uh, not having any issues like that please close your laptop when you're done with the meeting tonight not wearing pajama pants we're very excited okay <laughs> exactly right okay so now i don't have an what's the yes yeah, so, so now uh is a presentation Okay. So Mr. Palano, so, may, I, may I introduce the group? Is that all right? Please do. Thank you so much. Tonight, uh, in, um, as the board is aware, um, our science program over the uh, past number of years have had, has had several changes to it. Uh, at the request of the Board of Education, we've taken a look at our science sequence offerings, particularly at that time that students leave the eighth grade year and go into the ninth grade. Uh, and um, we, uh, I would like to thank the group led by uh, Kurt um, for delving into the, um, the decisions that have been made in the past, um, looking at options that uh, are before us now. And we asked the board, if, if, uh, if it's agreeable with the board, to allow us the opportunity to, to share these thoughts tonight um, that, um, that we've been working on. Uh, to get your feedback and then to come back with final recommendations for any changes that uh, might take place uh, at our June meeting. I would like to thank Kurt. I'd like to thank uh, Jim. I'd like to thank Justin. I'd like to thank Kim uh, for their hard work in uh, preparing for this evening. I think you'll find that they uh, have done quite a bit of homework and have uh, a quite a bit to share. At this time, Mr. Palano, if it's okay, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Simon. Very good, Kurt. Good evening, everyone. As Bob mentioned, uh, you know, there was a request uh, for the leaders to revisit the science sequence at the high school level. And as um, Bob mentioned, there, there have definitely been, been uh, some changes over the last several years, you know, certainly whether due to shifts in the Common Core, more recently, the next gen science standards, you know, introducing biology, um, accelerate, accelerated biology for all in grade eight you know, moving to open enrollment, uh, changes to physics uh, at the AP level, or tethering chemistry to advanced science and ninth graders. So, you know, moving forward, we really want to ensure that the science sequence is one that is in the best interest of our students, um, which is the purpose of tonight's uh, presentation. Um, you know, as Bob mentioned during, you know, our research over the last several months, the team examined the practices and course offerings of other school districts across the island, weighed the pros and cons, of the various options and reflected on the experiences of our own Cold Spring Harbor students. And I can tell you that after conducting all of this research, uh, it became evident that we would certainly benefit from the board's feedback so that um, we can review and as Bob mentioned, uh, make a recommendation at, uh, at the June board meeting. So therefore our goal tonight uh, for tonight's work session is to review our current status in science, which includes parts of our science sequences, sequence, especially at the ninth grade level, including earth science chemistry and its connection to advanced science research and physics with and without an honors option. Uh, the plan is to weigh the pros and cons of each model that Ms. Libertini will share this evening. Uh, of course, if there are any questions along the way, please don't hesitate um, to ask. However, we'll leave time at the end of our presentation for the board uh, to ask these questions. And at this time, I, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Bolton, who speak a little bit to opening up access to upper level science courses and frame the, the dilemma associated with the open enrollment process. Uh, Dr. Bolin. Great, thanks, Kurt. Um, so our, our overall goal is to really think about how we can open up access to upper level science. Um, we really believe in student choice and uh, we wanna provide access for our students, but also at the same time ensure 
that they meet with, with success in appropriate placements. The last thing we wanna do is open up uh, different options for students and to not have them meet with success. Uh, so in looking at that, what we have are some guiding principles that sort of took us through our work as we were looking at the pros and cons of each. Uh, our, our first guiding principle is that students need to have strong math skills in concert with their science choice. Uh, one of the issues that we would see if we were to open up science at, at younger ages is that we want to make sure our students are mathematically ready for the more rigorous science that they'll be uh, approaching. Um, the second guiding principle we have is that we want honors options um, to make sure that they're promoted in, in each science um, so that it doesn't seem like if it's not this, then I'm not going to be able to move forward uh, and to show students that there are different options as they come through into high school. Uh, you know, that's an important thing because uh, up until eighth grade, there really are not many choices for students to make. Uh, and so when they be, when they start to enter from eighth into ninth grade, it really does start to open up and fork into many different ways that a student could go. Uh, and so it's important for them to understand that there are all the different options that are available to them. Um, the other guiding principle we have is that choice should be based on student interest. Um, we know in Cold Spring Harbor, we know in many um, school districts where uh, performance is key for many students. Um, some may try to uh, latch on to what they think the, the, the most accelerated kids are doing, and I must do that because we're all doing that. Um, we want to really show students that the choices that they make should be something that they're interested in, because that's where they're going to have the most success and that's where they're going to find the most pleasure. Uh, and so because of this, the, the last guiding principle that we have is really key to all of this, which is that counseling is key when making these decisions. Uh, it's really incumbent upon conversations with our eighth grade counselor, Ms. Pickering, conversations with the students, conversations with the parents about the choices that are available to students and, and, and how each of those choices can play out for what the student and the parent goals are for um, for their child. So um, those are the guiding principles that we have in our overall goal of opening up access to upper level science. And they sort of help to guide what we were doing as we go through the, re the remainder of the presentation. So we want to sort of frame that for you. Uh, and then I'll turn it over to Kim Libertini, who will go through some of um, the pros and cons and starting with the uh, current plan that we have in place right now. Great. Is it okay with the board if I share the presentation um, with my screen? I'm going to share. Yes. Okay, wonderful. That's fine. <laughs> can you see the presentation now? I can. Can everyone, can everyone yep, see, it? see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So that's going to bring us down. So I thought that I would um, I would start with by discussing our current model, which is to accelerate chemistry honors with the advanced science research requirement. Um, our current model does allow grade nine to skip earth science, but in order for them to do so, these students must be co-enrolled in advanced science research and have successfully completed a year in algebra one. We can see this model offers this smaller cohort access to AP options sooner, and it may create pr better preparedness for programs with a concentration in engineering. Later, I'll discuss how the introduction of a physics honors in grade 10 could carve similar early access and increase student options. I should mention that this option does create a lack of exposure to the subject of earth science for this cohort of students. <clears throat> so if we look at this next slide, accelerating chemistry honors with the ASR requirement from an enrollment standpoint, it may in fact bolster the enrollment in ASR 1. And the co-enrollment does provide additional academic commitment, and that may serve as a filter for those with strong academic pursuits. But those that are enrolled in ASR 1 may not carry a true interest in pursuing research itself, and there may be a reduction in student scheduling flexibility because of the tether between these two courses. And we may, in fact, be excluding a population of students that really want to pursue acceleration, but don't want the research component. <clears throat> Moving forward to Earth Science for All in grade nine, we believe the model that I just spoke about, our present model, actually remedied this other option. 
Um, this other option, mandating all students to take earth science, we do recognize that this option highlights the value of earth science as a branch of science. And it does reduce um, both the chances of creating groups of homogeneous learners and intra-competition within a grade level. Despite meeting the next generation science standards and creating scheduling flexibility from a staffing perspective, we really need to recognize that this option does two things. One, it greatly reduces student choice in courses. And two, it reduces the early access to advanced courses. We know that these are two factors that historically have played a key role in programming decisions at Cold Spring Harbor. So this brings us to the next slide. To accelerate to chemistry honors without the research requirement, but with the successful completion of Algebra 1. This may provide access to AP courses earlier. It does suggest that there's better preparedness for engineering in college. And it, well, it also increases student options later on. But if we think about this option, it should be recognized that it is our belief this could not only create less exposure to earth science as a form of physical science for a much larger cohort of students, it may also simultaneously um, create uh, ac academically homogeneous groupings in both earth science and chemistry. Or this push to access chemistry sooner may reduce the rigor of the honors chemistry curriculum overall. And this really is due to the large spectrum of levels of students that would be registering for the honors course with our open enrollment. So if we look at um, accelerating again without ASR from a scheduling standpoint, it's our prediction that chemistry honors enrollment would increase along with student scheduling flexibility and early access to APs. Although we also predict earth science enrollment will decrease, which may impact both class size and scheduling from a staffing perspective due to certifications. Additionally, it's important to mention that the ASR enrollment may decrease while at the same time, there also may be an increase in the number of level downs for those that reach for the honors chemistry but aren't academically ready. And this ultimately could remove access to earth science honors for that group in those that wish to level down. And in turn, that could create mixed grades at the chemistry regions level. And finally, as we look at um, our science programming, one of the things that we looked at was the concern for adding a physics honors course. So currently we do not have a physics honors. So what does this mean for our programming and enrollment? This increase, uh, this definitely increases our enrollment in AP Physics 1. And the reason why is because AP Physics 1 is then the first course in physics that offers the weighting. But in the absence of an honors course, what happens is the students that need to level down have to drop down two levels from AP down to Regents Physics if they can't handle that, um, the, the AP level. So AP1, we also should uh, talk a little bit about that structure of AP1 because it's really only a half of year of physics. So what AP Physics 1 does is it doesn't adequately prepare students to take the SAT2 in, in physics. The current absence of the physics honors may also be reducing access to the higher level physics courses by grade 11. So that brings us to this next slide, um, the introduction of a physics program with a phys physics honors option. So if we add a course in physics honors, how does this impact our science sequencing? Students would be able to access AP Physics 2 or AP Physics C in grade 11. So this could potentially increase enrollment in both of those courses. But simultaneously, it's valuable to mention that it may reduce enrollment in AP Physics 1. We also predict that 
this would, could create two small cohorts of enrollment in both physics regions and physics honors. And finally, this could create a shift in science courses overall with the potential to impact the total numbers of students that are enrolled in AP Chem. So now I'll turn it back to Mr. Simon. Thank you, Ms. Libertini. Thank you, Dr. Bolin. Um, so the board sort of heard those, those pros and cons and the guiding principles from Dr. Bolin. Um, and as I mentioned in the opening, you know, it's, it's certainly evident that we'd benefit from the board's feedback and would like to open it up to uh, any questions uh, that the board might have. Um, I guess I'll start if that's okay. Um, I'm gonna start in reverse since um, Jim, you ended up with the physics um, honors option. Um, we did have physics honors in our district up until um, I think it was 20, um, I don't know, five, six, maybe seven years ago. Um, and it was very successful because not only does the physics honors option provide you with the ability to sit war and get a good grade on the SAT twos, it also prepared you to be able to take the regions, whereas the AP Physics one does neither of those things. So, um, you know, it puts the kids, they're not getting that regions exam under their belt with as far as the advanced, um, you know, the, the advanced diplomas. Um, I, in the past, it has had absolutely no effect on the AP Chem because right now, any effect this would have, this would probably go in at the 10th grade level that the physics honors. It still leaves 11th and 12th grade for you to take AP Chem or AP um, Biology or, hu or Human uh, or uh, Molecular Genomics honors. Um, so it has absolutely no bearing at all over what we have right now, which is the same thing, except for they're ending up in going into 11th and 12th grade. They've had no physics. And so they have to choose between physics, um, AP Chem, AP Bio, and the, the honors. So I only see it as, you know, an upside. The honors class is weighted. So I think that you made um, really good arguments with that. I just, I, I don't see how it possibly affects the AP Chem. Um, and, and I can say from in the past when we had AP Physics 1, I mean, AP Physics A and B, taking the honors physics allowed kids to skip number A and go into physics B. And that prevented kids from doing three years of a physics course. And also for those that were really um, you know, into the physics, they could actually, we had kids that would go from the physics honors straight into physics C. Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and all of our kids, not all, but, but by far the vast majority had physics under the belt before they graduated and left Cold Spring Harbor, which is not the case anymore. Um, so, you know, I think the physics honors is um, really important and I think it adds a lot of value as far as what's in the best interest of the kids and the opportunities that it pre presents for them. So that would be on the, um, the physics one. I, I looked with regards to the, the test, test the tying together of the chemistry and the advanced science research. And I have really big concerns. I still haven't heard why it is that you need, you only can take chemistry if you go into advanced science research. I've tried to research it. I find nothing to support that um, practice. Um, I was involved in this when we started the advanced science research. Um, I know why we did, it wasn't because you needed it for the chemist, for the um, advanced science research. But I can also tell you when you look at the numbers, kids are going into advanced science research in ninth grade in order to be able to take the chemistry and not the earth science. And the numbers play out. Um, you know, in 2018, there are 40 kids that went into, um, well, let me start with the first year we had it. There were 25 kids that went into advanced science research. 24 took chemistry honors. The next are 40 went into the ASR and 36 took chem honors. 
22 went in, 22 took chem honors, 45 went into advanced science, and 43 are already registered for chemistry honors. The following year, though, that the um, the 40 the 40 kids that were started ASR to take the chemistry, half of them bailed and left the course. And by and by the third year, 11th grade, only 13 out of the 40 even remained in that course. And the same can be said, you know, with the 25 that started in 2017 in the advanced science research. They got their chemistry, then some of them left the program. And now by 11th grade, there are only four that remain in that, that program, in that course. So I see absolutely, I mean, it, to me, it's pretty clear that kids are taking the advanced science research to get the chemistry. I also know from my older two children who were in the district when we did do chemistry honors and ninth grade, my kids were very successful in that. And that was the way that it, it um, went. They did bio in eighth grade, went on to the chemistry in ninth and um, physics in 10th. And um, it was very, very successful and stuff. Um, but I think that we really need to look at the numbers and what the chemistry, you know, and, and not only why kids are taking advanced science research, but do we want 40 kids in ninth grade taking a science, a, advanced science research who half of them drop out by the next year? I mean, I think we seriously need to look at, you know, why they're taking it. Um, you know, because we're not, they're not staying in it. So they're, they're doing nothing for our program in science research. You know, I think honestly, that science research program, realistically, we should only be looking at, you know, maybe 13, 15, 18 kids that go into it in ninth grade. I mean, you know, because the whole point of that was to get to do um, national competitions and stuff. And, you know, and, and then maybe the, the course needs to look looked at as well. I, I don't mean if everybody, does anybody else have anything to say? Because otherwise I'll keep going. <laughs> I got, I got things to say too. Thanks, Amy. Um, okay. I'm no, I just don't want to. Yeah, great. Um, I'm going to agree with Amy on a couple of things. I think um, the presentation you gave, um, there is a compelling reason to have the physics honors program. I always, um, I, my kids are, you know, I have one who's a freshman in college and I have two, one in high school and one in junior high now. But um, I always wondered because, you know, kids, it's too big of a jump for some kids and they don't meet success. And it also crowds out students who say, well, there's no way I could survive AP Physics 1. So then they never take that physical science in high school. And if you read enough about high school admissions, I'm sure Justin could attest to it, schools want to see all your natural sciences, including physics on your transcripts. So you have kids who just skip that and just don't even put it on their transcript. So this gives a compelling place for students to actually have this and learn it in high school and have two options to take the AP or the, or the honors one. So I like, I like that idea. Um, I also think it does put kids in a better place to take the SAT too, but there's an argument to say it's only a regents class and you might not really be ready for the SAT too. So that's another, you know, I wonder what kind of success they would have, but at least there'd be an option as opposed to now where you only have half the material to take the exam and you have to study outside of school. So I like that. Um, one question I had is how many students do we see who actually drop AP Physics 1 and have to level down too, or do they usually just stick it out and, you know, grind it out? I could pull those numbers, but I know, I know, Kim, you saw a couple of drops that came in this year. I don't know if you have the numbers off the top of your head for the AP Physics 1. I don't have the numbers off the, off the top of my head. Okay. But but let's just say it's a handful then. Yeah. Okay, I was just there curious. are some. It's, not a, big, yeah. it's yeah. not a big cohort that take it too, because they take other things. So, okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to say is, and I want to concur with Amy, um, tethering the science research to chem, I just don't think we should be doing it anymore personally because it, it, it's creating a, it's, it's crushing other electives. It's not even mathematically possible to think that 45 students next year are that 
gung ho to do science research. You know what I'm saying? They're taking it so they could take the chemistry and they're going to drop out the year after. And then you're going to have the same amount of kids that should have been in the program all along who are maybe passionate and will see this to the end. So I think the model's flawed and I agree that we kind of have to move away from it. The, the only one kind of concern or a question I had was, I mean, I, I like earth science because I think there's such a place for it in the, in the world right now, right? We, we talk so much about, uh, you know, global economies and global and environmental issues. And it's so important for kids to understand that. And I, my two children took earth science, my older ones, and they really liked it. You know, my, my oldest son actually took geology now this last semester at school and he liked it even more. And he's not even, he's like a political science kid. So go, so go figure on that. But um, he, uh, the one thing I have to say is, if we allow kids, let's just say, that you could take you know, either earth science or chemistry as a freshman, and you have a choice, but you have to have the math, are we inherently creating now two tracks? You know, like, oh, the kids who are good in math all get to do one thing, you know what I mean? One track, and the ones who couldn't take algebra, which is like pretty much 50%, you know, half and half, or, you know, 55, 45, whatever numbers you gave, are we inherently tracking now, students? in a way that we maybe wouldn't have wanted. That's my only, like, I, I pause when I look at that. Or maybe students don't care and they'll just take what they want, which is what you really want is student choice and engagement. So it's just something I wanted to, you to think about. Um, that's something that I thought about. If I, if I could just jump in for a second, okay. I think Amy, Amy and Ingrid, I think uh, we would agree with everything that you've said about um, what the program looks like at this point. That's exactly what the numbers are showing. Um, we are seeing students taking the ASR just to get the chem. Um, we do think that the, the physics honors is a good option because of the switch when they went to AP Physics 1 and 2 from the B and C. It really did cut the program in half a little bit and made kids have to choose. Um, the, the, the one issue, and I think Ingrid, what you were just keying in on is something that we put in that, those guiding principles, which is the counseling here is key. Uh, it's because of where students are coming from eighth grade in order to make that decision. We don't want to create us versus them where you were saying, yep, if you have the math, you go into the chem. However, I think if you're coming just from math eight and then going into chemistry, you might struggle. Um, and that that's a problem. That's why I think the other thing to be really keyed in on is that other goal or that other guiding principle we put in about really focusing on the honors options in ninth grade and giving honors options to students. You know, there, there's a little bit of bright here because there are some ASL students who said, I'd like to do ASR, but I don't want to take the, the chem. And they opted to take, or every year we have a couple of students that opt to take the earth science honors. And I think in, in the conversation with the untether, we really can have those deeper conversations about the differences between chemistry honors or an earth science honors for students. Uh, but I do think though, Again, we don't have, and this is now, the, the other difference is it's, we're now in open enrollment, right? So that's something we have to take into consideration. And that's why there, there's that successful completion of algebra, because we want kids to be able to be successful. Um, and that, that's why that would be put in there. There's something we can talk about, whether that's a prerequisite or what we put in as a best chance for success. Uh, and then that becomes really heavy on the shoulders of guidance counselors to really talk about, well, you are coming from math eight. I don't know if necessarily chemistry honors is going to be the best option for you. The other great and thing I is- just re Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just remembered that, um, you know, it wasn't at Cold Spring Harbor because we're small. A lot of these classes, they're, they're mixed by grade level. I mean, it's not like only ninth graders can take take a class, only 10th graders. There were plenty of times, and I know this is still true, where like for chemistry honors, those that then did the algebra, but a year later, still after that year had the option of going into that. Absolutely. Yes, they might be in there with more ninth graders, yeah. but it's still a viable option. They, they can go that route, you know, and um, so there is opportunity, just like once you get into, um, you know, 10th grade, really the physics, whether kids in 12th grade want to take uh, physics regents and, and kids in 10th grade want to take it. It's, it's a mix of different classes. I, I do see your point, and there might be value with earth science, having an earth science honors class in addition to a chemistry honors, both at the ninth grade 
you know, year to give those, even those kids, as you were saying, that were in the algebra in eighth grade, but don't want to do the chemistry. They're, they might be more, you know, uh, social studies, English, whatever, and they're really interested in the earth science. Mm -hmm. I, and, and I think they should have that opportunity. I think mm -hmm. that would be, you know, something that would definitely be worthwhile looking into. I just think, uh, you know, just yeah. to talk a little bit about that math uh, question that Ingrid had was, you know, really, we just want to have a thoughtful math conversation for success in chemistry. And the reason why is because if we don't have that conversation about what, what it would take to be successful, usually by the time students realize that they're not achieving at the level which which they want to, it's so late into, right, past first marking period, well into second, sometimes pushing the limits of the end of second marking period, that by then they lose that opportunity to slide down into earth science honors, which would be the same level honors at the opposite choice, um, where they might be more successful and still have that honors waiting. So that was one of our concerns when we talked about the, the math level. Right, they but still have the opportunity to go. To in every, wait, can in I? every AP social studies as well. I mean, every AP that kids go into, I mean, we have that issue across the board. That's not unique to this. I'm, this. Okay, I'm trying to raise my hand. Oh, sorry, Chance. That's okay. That's Kim, I think that um, the way you've explained it is, you know, very important. And I think that that is a discussion to be had. Um, and the, I would agree that there's compelling reasons for you know, a physics honors class to have the chem honors class not be tied to the science research and also to make sure that we are doing the counseling piece to talk about the skills that are necessary to succeed in classes and how that melds with what a student's interest is. And by having, if we can have all of those options, we really do open up one of the, and address one of the goals that Jim, you started with is to really allow students to explore their interest within science. And there are students who have very different interests within the realm of science. And that interest may change as they experience one course and decide where they're gonna go from there. So the more that we can do that, I think the more we really are serving students you know, so I think that all of those recommendations, if we can work them out together, lead to the best options for students to succeed and find their passion within science. And um, Kim, I also, I found, I don't know if you can see this. This is the flow sheet from when we used to do, um, I mean, I'll send it to you. You know, and it just shows, you know, this was base, basically, you know, you took the bi you took the, um, ex the biology in eighth, you took chemistry honors, or you could take the earth science, but they didn't have an honors earth science. It was either you took regents earth science or you took chemistry honors. If, if you had done, you know, the, um, the uh, algebra in eighth grade. Um, so, I mean, definitely, you know, the earth science honors might, you know, I don't know if I would get rid of that so quick. Uh, yeah, we have the earth science honors in nine, the chem honors could be an option in nine. Um, or the, and the, the, I think the reason why we want to have the discussion is because, um, prior to the open enrollment, um, there, there may have been other selection criteria for taking that chemistry honors versus the earth science honors. Now, as we've moved into the open enrollment era, that's why the, for us, the counseling part is so key. Absolutely. Because that, that now that, that instead of saying, okay, we're going to select 30 kids that may be good for chemistry and move them up to chemistry in ninth grade, anyone really with an open enrollment can make that choice. And so it really is incumbent upon talking about the math skills, talking about the, the interests and where those interests lie for students, the conversations with parents and, and the guidance counselor as to the why you want to go into, into this. You know, one of the things that we did, we saw some of that movement happening, obviously with the ASR and kids taking ASR just for the chemistry. So one of the things that we added again, not as a, a, as a deterrent, but we wanted kids, they had to write a letter 
or a, a one page essay of why they want to take research so that at least those that were thinking, well, I'll just do the research to get to the chemistry. It might have had more students that might have said, you know what, I really do want the research instead of. Um, but again, we're, we, and we understand that we're putting up all these different roadblocks for uh, chemistry just for the uh, ASR. And that doesn't help the ASR program. It puts kids in the ASR program that are just doing it for another reason. Uh, and I think you're right, a, a high teens number in ASR is where we wanna go and that'll stop the attrition that we're seeing and really have your kids that really are interested in the advanced science research to continue with that rather than just taking it for uh, a science honors, a chemistry honors in ninth grade. Absolutely. Yeah. And may I, may I say also, may I say one thing? I'm sorry. I, I just, I'm sorry, Mr. Brogan. Go ahead. I apologize. Uh, I, do, I, I just wanted to um, say that the, uh, the idea of a prerequisite uh, for the comp successful completion of Algebra 1 in eighth grade is just a reflection of our thinking, I believe, that um, if students are not at least at that level by the end of eighth grade, there would be serious concern Kim, I, I think we would agree about their ability to successfully engage in the math required in chemistry honors in ninth grade. I, I don't want to, I'm a social studies person, so I don't want to speak, but I do think that that's something we would like feedback from the board about. Um, yes, we have an open enrollment policy, mm -hmm. but at times we do set prerequisites to establish at least a baseline skill that would be um, necessary for that child's likely success. See, I... Going not to just keep going back, but I will anyway. Um, the chemistry once we went to open enrollment, which was we went to open enrollment the very next year. That's when chemistry. You know, a lot of people went into chemistry because it was open enrollment, and you know they weren't successful. And then chemistry went away. And I mean, it's there for a lot of. There's some other reasons too, but I, I won't go into that. But I think that if we, if you keep earth science honors as well as chemistry honors, those kids, you know, have an option. Before yeah. it was only if you wanted the honors, you had to do the chemistry. So yeah. parents, whether the kids wanted to do it or not, made their kids do it. And kids did it because they wanted the honors, you know. And stuff. So I think I think having the two, having a choice, would go a really long way to allowing those kids that want an honors science course in ninth grade would have the opportunity and not feel the pressure to go into the chemistry, which, you know, I forget Jim or Kim who said it, but you know, that maybe they'd be, you know, more mature or whatever the following year or could deal with it better. So I I, I do like that. And you know, the prerequisite um, of having algebra for the chemistry, um, you know, I think is, is I mean, it makes sense to me. I, I think that you do need that for success. Now, I don't know enough because I didn't look into the earth science enough. Are you recommending that they have the algebra in order to go into earth science honors or could they go into earth science honors from math eight currently well, I don't think we have yeah, that. currently they don't have that if you okay. take math eight oh. you can go into earth science honors so okay. i would and definitely we, continue we would, with that because okay. then you'd be like harming the kids who take math eight and not giving them an honors option so i right. would but, i agree Amy. Then, so then that makes no i mean i was just wondering because i wasn't sure and it makes no sense then to make something arbitrary if we don't do it now and it gives those kids then the opportunity go into an honors course which is what we want looking for opportunity for our students you know to just give them as much as we can with with them being able to um you know take advantage of all we have to offer we have great ad courses mm -hmm. yes 
I also think, I mean, tethering the, the, uh, the math to the science, I'm pretty sure, and I don't have the program study in front of me, but like when you take AP Physics 1, you have to have at least Algebra 2 behind you or something like that. Like we usually do tether certain math requirements to certain levels of science that require a great deal of math inherently in them. So this right. would be similar to the path that we have for other things. So I think right. it makes sense. I think it puts kids in a place of success and it gives choice, which is the most important thing is giving student choice, thoughtful student choice. That's key. So we're not talking about requiring it for the earth science honors, no. correct? We were only talking about the chemistry honors. Yeah. Correct. I mean, because they aren't, they shouldn't be tethered. Okay. Correct. So, no, so you I, know, years ago, even before the iteration that Amy was talking about, what had happened was that there was an earth science honors course in not in eighth grade. That's before biology was for everybody in eighth grade. And other students took a general eighth grade course. And then some students who found that they loved science and were inspired in eighth grade jumped earth science into chemistry in ninth grade. And that was one of the times when the counseling piece that you're talking about was important because the math didn't match with the jump to even chemistry, not let alone chem chemistry honors. And the talking about it with people and understanding why and explaining so that it's not seen as an arbitrary decision, I think is very important. When people understand why you're counseling someone one way or another, they can make good choices. Yeah, right. and I, I would have to say that the counseling that our students receive at the eighth grade level by our counselor is outstanding. And I think, um, you know, we can certainly rely on her under uh, Justin's guidance to make sure that our students really have a sense of the impact of all those choices and all the options available. Great. Anyway, I just want to say Kim and uh, Jim, but I guess Kim, you did the presentation, you did a very nice job. A lot of good information and um, stuff. So thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Feilano, that, that was our presentation. Our hope is that we can take the feedback from the board this evening. Mm -hmm. And um, we can come back to the board in June with the recommendations that we would um, suggest moving forward based on this feedback and the questions and comments of the board. Okay. Does anybody else have any other comments? All right. That, that presentation was great. And Kim, thank you. I thought thank uh, you. I, I have to concur with Amy. I, I thought that was a great presentation. Yes, and, thank you. Um, and Jim and Kurt, all your input was, uh, was very valuable. Thank okay. You. Thank so you. We, Thank you. Hey, so, else, Mr. Paylano. Oh, James, you always have something. For me. <laughs> <laughs> We're what almost there. Uh, the issues. next, the next item on the agenda, Mr. Paylano, is the BOCES budget vote for 2020-2021, okay. uh, as well as the BOCES board vote. And there are three candidates for three open spots: Ms. Santos, uh, Mr. Wunsch, and Mr. Caden. Uh, so that is next on the agenda. If you wanted to take them as a group, and I assume that we would be voting in favor of all three candidates. Uh, let me know if, if that's otherwise. Okay, I, let's take them as a group, if that's okay with everybody. So can I get a motion for us to agree to those both these candidates in the vote? Okay, I have Ingrid, I have Mark McIntyre, all in favor? Okay, you have unanimous, James. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And the next item on the agenda is a budget transfer for prior board approval. Um, and it is in the amount of $15,760. And this, uh, as per the backup, is for additional uh, technology costs uh, that we have so we can make some uh, additional purchases needed. Okay. Can I get a motion on that, please? Julie and Mark McIntyre, uh, any comments? All in no, favor? Is, oh, yes, Amy. No, I just, is, is that to purchase like more iPads or Chromebooks or? No, it is actually, or? Um, it's for a few projects that we're working on. One of the projects are we're going to be placing uh, phones in the classrooms at Lloyd Harbor and Westside. Currently the 
classrooms have intercoms, but not phones that can dial out. Uh, so this will allow uh, not only for 911 to be able to be called from each classroom, but also for teachers to make calls to parents from uh, the classroom if they so choose. It will not accept incoming calls directly to the room. Folks will still need to call the main office. Uh, also document stands, uh, and these are stands I think that you can put your, uh, is it your phone or such, Joe? Uh, and it can aid in our digital instruction where they will hold your phone over, you know, I guess a piece of paper or, or whatever you might be trying to show. Uh, and then finally, uh, we're going to be installing temperature sensors on our refrigeration equipment. Uh, these are sensors similar to what is in our network operation center, which alerts us when a, the temperature goes above or below a certain level. We set that. So this will be installed on our walk-in refrigerators and freezers. And so we'll get an email alert or text alert letting us know that there's a dangerous temperature in those areas so that uh, we can head off any surprises and and accommodate uh, any repairs that are needed. So that is the budget transfer of $15,760. Thank you, James. Thank you. All right, all in favor? Okay, we, James, you have unanimous on that too? Perfect, thank you. And then uh, we have one more item, and this is the uh, technology lease, uh, the multi-year lease uh, for 2020-2021 with Western Suffolk BOCES. As the board is aware, each and every year we enter into a new five-year agreement uh, through Western Suffolk BOCES for the purchase of technology equipment. The total five-year cost, including interest, is $685,650. Uh, this payment, first payment is included in our budget proposal for next year. And uh, the process is really one one lease will fall off. We start a new lease. That's why they're five year leases, and you know, so we're in a constant five year cycle. So whereby the budget stays neutral because although we're starting a new payment next year, we've made the fifth payment on our our, our oldest lease this year. So just we have that motion for approval so that we may begin that process. Mr. Monastero did a describe the items that would be purchased when we had our seems forever ago but when we had our budget uh, workshop uh, in February. Okay, great. Can I get a motion? Uh, Ingrid, Amy, any comments? All in favor? Okay. okay, great. And then I only need one more thing from you and that would be a motion to adjourn. Oh, can I get a motion to adjourn? How about Janice and I see Julie, uh, all in favor? Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, good you night. everybody. All right, good night, everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night everyone.